Hey everyone, Dan here. We are just before market close on Wednesday, June 23rd. We're going to do an update on Workhorse today. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. And feel free to leave a comment below if you have thoughts, opinions, questions, tickers you'd like me to cover. Those are all really helpful. And lastly, feel free to share these videos if you enjoy them and would like to help spread the word about the channel. Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, all great places to share, and I'm sure you probably have some additional places where you pick up info like this as well, and I would appreciate anything that you'd like to pass along to others. Okay, so Workhorse, um, I'll delete this box in a second because boy oh boy is it in the way right now, but um, you know, in my last update video I had said, you know, left this channel and it was then caught under this um, downtrend and it was trying to break it and it broke through and then it hugged the um, trend line for a little bit, which is not uncommon. But basically I said, you know, if it breaks through this trend line, this downtrend, I'm going to look for it to rise pretty significantly um, in the in the white box, uh, which is today. And so we saw it did exactly that. So I'll get rid of this white box now that you know what it was. And it is doing a really nice job at the moment hugging these um, price zones that we had targeted. So left the downtrend, came up, immediately tested that 1511 zone that we had plotted, consolidated along there, got support, right up to test the 1543, worked its way through, got support, and now is making its test of this 1585 zone that we had charted. So hitting all of the chart positions along the way. Hopefully this has been giving folks uh, opportunities for dip buying and a price strength, as I like to talk about, giving you an opportunity to watch it hit a resistance zone, pull back a little bit, and therefore you buy into that overall price strength. Um, so a really good day so far for Workhorse, um, you know, 10% almost. So no one is going to sneeze at that. Um, It'll be interesting to see what it can do with these support levels now that it has, you know, a couple below it that it could bounce off of if it gets some pushback. Um, and then, you know, if, if, if it can at the moment, though it only has a few minutes left before the market closes, uh, to get support at that 1585, uh, cause then the next resistance level should be that 1629. So it gives it another, um, decent amount of room to run. Uh, so yeah, I think this is looking great for now, doing exactly what we'd hoped it would do. Um, as it was breaking out of that trend, you know, it looked like it was potentially going to fall right back in, but it's always questionable with this like after hours and pre-market movements. Um, a lot of things could be kind of not quite, uh, <laughs> legitimate. It's not quite how they're actually going to play out. Um, when you see that price activity. So um, actually looking at this 1440 zone is probably, if it dips back down here again, going to be a good zone because you have support here, resistance, support, 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 and resistance there. So there'll probably be a good one in the future if it's needed, but you know, hopefully this is just the start of a really nice uptrend for Workhorse. It could use it after the challenges that it has seen, um, you know, I mean, this crazy run, and then I think this is probably when the USPS contract fell through, and or just all growth stocks are getting slaughtered, um, you know, and then it's tried to put together a run now, and sort of like this could start to look like a really nice bull flag also that uh, it's broken out of here. So good job so far. Definitely a lot of work left to do for Workhorse if it wants to make it happen uh, in the long run, but you know, you got to start somewhere. Let's take a look at the data. Um, let's first pop over. So this, um, whoa, this went into effect today, as folks know, I'm sure, but I don't doubt that this rule is potentially helping workhorse today. Um, probably not, you know, the be all end all of why it's jumping so rapidly. Um, but I think sort of like the price strength and the short selling situation are becoming a bit of a, a feeding frenzy, you know, one's feeding off of the other. So basically what happened today was, uh, let me see if I scroll up a little bit here. So this was submitted by the NSCC on March 5th. It will take immediate effect tomorrow. 
Wednesday, June 23rd. So obviously this was written yesterday because that is today. So today this went into effect and you can read the details for yourself if you want. Let's just cut to the chase. In other words, heavily exposed market makers like Citadel would have to cover their short selling bets within a day lest they risk defaulting and having their assets frozen. Um, and then down here, <laughs> of course, the NSCC also has the authority to close any open positions of a defaulting member. Rule number two stands out in particular as it invokes Citadel's impressive list of FINRA violations. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of a funny little... Uh, sassy tone there. But uh, with the new rule about to go live, the ability of market makers like Citadel to exert such market force will be greatly reduced due to their liquidity reduction. Daily down payment collection will tie up their available capital. So, um, you know, it, it's uh, definitely looks like it's going to have an impact. I don't doubt for a second though, and I would just keep this in mind. Um, you know, just like when something happens, just in any part of life, not necessarily trading, um, humans just tend to find workarounds for things, right? So <laughs> while this might sort of like tie their most immediate hands, like the, the might sort of like throw a monkey wrench into the wheel that they're trying to keep turning by just doing the same thing they've always done, I don't doubt for a second that there will be a bunch of sort of new tactics that um, they work themselves into in order to be able to still take advantage of some of these things. What that is, is going to be like to be seen, but it'll be sort of like an interesting, like investigative journalist kind of, um, uh, like nut to crack because, uh, I'm sure it's coming, but who knows how long it'll take to unfold and exactly what it'll be, but I'm going to keep my eye on it. It's definitely an interesting time. That's for sure. But Let's see what's been going on. So they can still hold things for a day. Um, the way that I read it is also they can still hold things for longer than a day. They just put themselves at remarkable risk. And um, I guess the more real impact is that their uh, capital uh, is going to be restricted or will have the net effect of being restricted. Um, so in those ways, it should have some impact. But uh, the way I read it, they could still hold for longer than a day. And they can still go in and out intraday, obviously, uh, which I think is a lot of what we see commonly. But folks just kind of get into this habit of thinking that like short sellers are buying and holding for months or something. But anyway, uh, the short volume ratio that came in after close yesterday in the mid 20s. So we know mid 20s is pretty high. 30s is pretty crazy, which we saw back on 616. So definitely shorts continuing to come in. We did see a nice close out here. But still, the availability of the shares to borrow, very, very low from interactive brokers. So you would assume this is relatively representative of the other broker dealers that loan out stocks. The data has been kind of herky-jerky today for whatever reason. Uh, yesterday, too, there was this big lag between 1230 and 4 o'clock. And now today, we're definitely not getting every 15 minutes. Uh, this hasn't updated. It's after Um Oh, that's only one fifteen. Yeah, it's well after one fifteen. The market's almost it's about to close. So um but you know, the fee is holding steady. The fee is something. It's not, you know, the greatest fee. It would be much nicer if it was 10x this fee. But uh, you know, it's something. And yeah, but the thing that stands out to me is the availability being so low, especially you see a bunch jumped in from the twenty first to the twenty second, nearly consuming all those three hundred and fifty thousand available. Uh with just one broker dealer. So spread that out again amongst several. Uh, Ortex basically supporting uh, a lot of what we saw there. Um, estimated short interest percentage of free float, um, 59 down to 53. Um, or sorry, previously 53 up to 59. Um, and today, as of this morning, they're showing a short interest change of plus 3.24 again. Current short interest percent of free float, 61.23%. So, I mean, people who thought 30, 40, 50 was high, uh, Ortex is now saying 61.23. And so while these um, rules are going into effect today, you know, this is happening on the same day as well. So we'll see if it had a big impact as the morning data comes out tomorrow. But, um, you know, pretty crazy at the moment. The utilization also 
97.21. And if you're unfamiliar with the utilization, it's right here. The ratio between the number of shares on loan across all outstanding loans in the wholesale market and the number of shares available for lending at lending programs. 0% means that shares have blah, 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 blah. 100%, which is nearly where we're at now, means that all shares available to borrow or lend at a lending program have, in fact, been lent. Um, so they are definitely hot on the tail of Workhorse still, um, but Workhorse doing a great job today, um, you know, getting out of that downtrend, using that to propel itself, and right now, um, looking at the close to get support at that 1584 level, that was the next one that we had our eye on, you know, then you're going to want to make sure that it doesn't top out too many times in this zone, which is where it'll be very, very soon. You really want to see it stretch for that 1629 sooner than later, because um, triple topping out there could be pretty rough, but it is nice that it's the price is now stretching above this previous high, so we wouldn't be in a position where it's started to make lower highs. So that's a positive sign for sure. So I'll be interested to see what the short data says tomorrow, um, see what impacts this rule might have had, but you know, as it stands at the moment, still rushing in. 468,000 returned, 2.7 million borrowed back out. <laughs> so, um, you know, and then maybe they had to close today or felt that they had to close today. And maybe that contributed to sort of this uh, nice bump up today. All right. Well, good luck if you're in this one. I will do my best to keep you all updated. So feel free to subscribe if that sort of thing is interesting to you. I also have a link where you can drop your email if you want to sign up for my newsletter, which doesn't exist yet, but I'm planning to, to put it out in the next couple of months. Um, so nothing that'll hit you immediately, but I'm sort of collecting emails in the meantime. And, uh, you know, that I'm intending it to be a once a week, maybe twice a week kind of thing. I'll sort of aggregate some stuff together, send it out there as an additional touch point beyond the videos because I can only make so many videos in a day. Um, it is time consuming, but this will allow me to sort of, like I said, build things um, in a different way and deliver it in a different medium um, to folks. All right. Well, thanks a bunch for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.